Hello, it's me, and we're somewhere off the coast, I believe, of Jamaica. I think that's Jamaica there. Somewhere over there. Anyway, I thought I'd take a little pause and go through a, a continuation of kind of a modification tutorial by looking at this particular shape. Um, now, this kind of a modification, this is another 3x3 as opposed to this. This is a 3x3 cube to cube mod. This is where you modify it from one shape to another. And we've seen this before, again, with a with the Megamorphinx and the Pyromorphinx, uh, Master Morphinx series rather, and the Pyromorphinx series. But this actually goes into what we call a hexagonal dipyramid, hexagonal dipyramidal form, if I can pronounce that right. Basically what that means is it's a hexagon from the standpoint that it moves on three uh, planes basically. Here, one, two, three, I'm sorry, six planes, four, five, six. So it is hexagonal in its structure, which means it's kind of like it's a cubic in its structure. But its external structure has actually been expanded out to um, to uh, uh, six sides. And it has a sort of a dipyramidal shape. You see a pyramid here and a pyramid here. So a hexagonal dipyramidal puzzle. But it's solved very much like a 3x3. Three three. So the whole key to solving this guy, if you wanted to add it to your collection, just so that I can you know, show what it is, is uh, once again perspective. But it's a different kind of perspective as this guy. Because what we're doing is we're actually adding on shapes to this. We're carving out this hexagonal dipyramid, this dipyramidal shape, with a hexagonal function um, underneath that. So as you can see, as we analyze it, this will be defined as a side, say. We've got our center here, which looks like the center of any other type of a cube. Uh, we've got edges, and you can see that the edges, there's just one, there's actually two types of edges, rather. There's this that has the trifecta, the three colors, two small one, one large one. And the large one is a side that's defined independent of any of these sides. Now this particular one has only six colors even though there's 12 sides. Didn't have to be that way, but this is how it is mostly done with this puzzle if you were to buy it. There's another side over here. So over here you can see that there's three different colors. Here there's, um, for this, there's two colors. And this is going to be important as we're solving that. And then edges, we've got one that's one colored edge, and here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six colors to this edge, as it's combining the false sides, which actually don't move at all, and, and um, three of the true sides. So, when scrambling this guy, once again, like all mods, it is a shapeshifter. And when you're scrambling it, you find that you start to see the cube underneath. So I'm going to just go ahead and continue the process of scrambling it and pick it up in a, set, in a bit. Abracadabra. Okay, there we go. Now I find that each different mod, although the basic solve strategy is pretty much the same, we're basically dealing with variable supercube functionality in an underlying 3x3 three three hexagonal structure. But the, um, the way that the, uh, they behave, the characteristics of the specific mods really lend to um, uh, differences. Now remember in the scrambled form this looked like a bunch of shards, both this and the 4x4 four four version of it. This, it actually looks like a cube. It looks like a bizarre shaped cube. The challenge of this was in order to get our perspective as to where our sides actually are. I mean that was a little bit difficult. Here that's not the challenge. The challenge, as you can see, the movement is quite easy here with these guys. Uh, it doesn't look like they're shards. And you can see the structure quite easy two, center, edge, 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 corner, 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 corner. The issue here is carving out the extra shape and the false sides that emerge out of this. So that's what makes this a little bit different. Um, and this is the most basic form of, um, of the hexagonal dipyramid, the 3x3. Three three. So let's walk through this, as this will be useful as we start moving into higher order versions of this puzzle. <laughs> So I'm going to start off with a green side, and again, being a 3x3, three three, we have all of our centers defined for us. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to find all of the sides, uh, the edges rather, that have the green facing it. So say over here, here's green, and it looks like it's probably going to match up with the red center. I'm going to be defining what these three colors here do is this is going to define a new side. Now this could be another color a separate color than anything else that we have, but it actually isn't. It matches with this here. But don't confuse this with this side. This actually belongs at the red side, which is over here. So what I'm going to do is turn it up so that these guys match, turn it up over here, so now we've got that. 
So you can sort of see how we're going to be carving out this dipyramidal shape within this internal hexagon, so to speak. So let's find another edge. So we can see this over here. This belongs with this corner of this center over here. This belongs up here, so I'm just going to move it up like so. So this, this is actually correct. Or so I think. Don't confuse this with this over here. Uh, now, if this were to have six, uh, 12 different colors instead of six, it would have its own challenges, but it's still pretty challenging with, with the three colors. Okay, now this edge here has two colors. So this is actually gonna be belong with this center over here, and then this gets moved up. So I'm just putting greens to green. So here's green, uh, this belongs over here, and you can sort of see this false yellow center starting to emerge here. So now we just do another one with a green. And that is gonna be right over here. This green edge is gonna come down. So let me move this down here. And this is gonna to go to the orange center, which is right over here. So we'll go up to match the orange center, bring this up, and make sure we bring this down. So believe it or not, this crazy thing is actually our cross. This is good over here, good over here. And you can see that we're gonna to start to forge a secondary false green side through here. Now that we have that, let's try to navigate our way through the corners. So how are we gonna do that? And this is where the challenge of this puzzle kind of comes from. Well, if I'm gonna say that this is green and we're defining a green side here, we're probably gonna be looking for a solid green, which is right over here. So I'm gonna say that this corner coincides with this over here. So I'm just gonna roll this in pretty simply until it just feels like it matches up. So I try to get a general idea, but I try not to memorize stuff beforehand. All right, so this looks, this looks okay over here. So over here, we have a juxtaposition of green and we have orange. So do we have something that might accommodate a corner uh, like that with greens and oranges? Well, I've got a bunch of oranges here, so maybe this is what I want, it's just turned upside down. Maybe we're done with green at that part. So let's just roll this in and see what happens in a way that looks more symmetric. Turn and turn. So yeah, we kind of like that. We finished with the green, so this is all straight oranges and straight greens. So, so far not too shabby. Um, now this over here, we're seeing green, we're seeing yellow, and we're seeing silver, and we're seeing red. So we're probably gonna wanna juxtapose all those colors together. We've got the false sides here, which this is increasingly turning into yellow. This false side is orange. This true side is silver, this true side is red, and then we have green. So we have our three colors, and it just so happens to be, is it this one? Well, we've got the yellow, green, but now we've got the orange, rather. We got blue, blue's not part of this picture. Uh, well, actually, maybe it is. Maybe there's a blue that we that we don't see. So which one is it? Is it this one? Well, we're gonna wanna roll the the green side up into here. And my thinking is that this probably belongs along here, so this large green probably belongs here. This doesn't look like it's gonna be a small green over here. So I'm gonna to venture to guess that this green has the yellow one just to the left of it. This false side is just to the left of this green. This orange is just to the right. So this orange is just to the right of this green. So I think we can pretty clearly say that, that this is what it is. So let's... Plop that in here, and yeah, so that fits nicely. And actually there was a blue that was being defined in there. So you can see that the shape, the pyramidal shape is starting to come through. Over here, it looks to be like we're combining a false yellow here with a yellow side, so it's probably this one here. The good thing about these lower order versions of these puzzles is when you start getting like the 4x4 versions, the master versions of these puzzles, in other words, generally the 4x4s turn into the masters, and then you go into the professors, which is the, like the 5x5, and then you get into the elites, and the royals, which is even higher order. So you can see the pramble shape over here, so we've carved that out. So we have basically our first side over here with our cross. So keeping that perspective, we're gonna turn this upside down and start putting these, uh, the second layer in, which is a layer of edges. This is already in, and this is looking pretty good. So what belongs over here? Well, I see orange and silver. This looks like it's right up our alley. And worst comes to worst, 
you can sort of fold it down here and see if things even up, which they do. So with the same 3x3 three three, um, algorithm, this is placed down here. Turn, 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 and turn. So looking good. Uh, what about this? Well, we need yellow, we need green, probably orange, which looks like this guy right over here. So turn, 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 and turn. So, doing well. Now this guy, we need red, we need yellow, right, right over here. Turn. So just the two colors actually make this part fairly easy. So now we were able to pretty quickly get the second layer. So I'm curious about this top layer. Now notice this is a little different from this modification because the centers are one color. As you recall, these centers are two colors. So we had we had to think about the orientation of that and that's how it acted like a super cube. This orientation is meaningless. This could be rotated any direction and that doesn't have any meaning. So in that way, this is a little simpler. Uh, so let's see which is rotated up and which is rotated down. Well, this is obviously rotated up and it's correctly oriented, so that's fine. The blue is up here, so this is rotated up and that's correctly oriented, which means that this is rotated down, so this is upside down, this blue has to come up, and this blue has to come up. So in other words, we have a line. So we just do the algorithm that flips these two, F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. Again, I'm assuming knowledge of how to solve the Rubik's Cube, so now all of these are flipped up the way you would flip up a 3x3. Three three. Um, this is in, this is in. Now, the good news with this is I don't have to worry about specific orientation. If I had to worry about specific orientation here, then I'd be in a little bit of trouble. We might see this with a 4x4 four four version of this, but I'm going to do this exactly like the Rubik's Cube, where if I see it like this, if I see two in, I, I just turn it over by one here, and that'll rotate this down to here. Turn, 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 one, two, and turn. If I'm going too fast with this, or if I'm making assumptions you know this, let me know, I can be more specific. So basically we have our top cross, then it's just a matter of getting these guys in. This is where it needs to be. Is this where it needs to be? And this is the part that might be a little more challenging. This probably needs to come over here. And this, with all the different colors, probably needs to come here because we're lined up with a false layer here. We need um, orange, silver, green, blue, and yellow. Orange, silver, green, blue, and yellow. So this has to come here. So as this is the only one that's correct, I'm going to do the rotational algorithm or the swapping algorithm for the corners. Forward, forward, back, back, bang, bang, zoom, pow. This is where it needs to be. Uh, not quite. This solid red and uh, needs to come here. This solid blue needs to come here. So again, we do our U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. And now everything is where they need to be. These guys just need to be flipped. So we do our flipping. Turn, 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 turn. This comes back. Turn, 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 and it's done. So that wasn't too bad. Basically, this is the basic hexagonal dipyramidal walkthrough of this this kind of a structure. But now let's see if we can't move this on into higher layer versions of the hexagonal dipyramidal structure and see if maybe something else emerges out of that. Uh, different types of parodies may come with that. But before I move into the higher versions, the 4x4 versions, and even beyond or even less, I want to show this guy over here. And I'm giving a question to all you out there. What is this? What kind of a puzzle is this? It obviously has a hexagonal dipyramidal structure um, as well. But what kind of a modification is this? Let me just show you some of the movements. This turns here, much the way you've seen with the sides. But then I've got this turning over here, which is a little bit different. And as I'm coming around this puzzle, you can see I can turn here, I can turn here. So your quiz is to identify what this is. What kind of a puzzle is this? And um, see who gets that first and see if we can't navigate our way through this. This is a combination here of a couple things. 
but I'll just kind of turn this around here. I'll just kind of turn this around here. Ta da! A little bit over here. Then let's turn this guy all around. So even what I'm defining as sides isn't exactly the same. So tell me what you think, and we'll come back more with that later.